Well, let's stay with the issue of value investing across a couple of other sectors. I'm joined in the studio by fund manager Roger Montgomery. Roger, welcome. Thank you, Tiggy. Now, you say once or twice every year, and it's a, a rare thing, you do become absolutely sure about something. Why? And, and what is it right now? Well, it's not often that you can be absolutely certain about something, but we're increasingly confident, in fact, almost 100% certain now that we're going to see uh, a rolling disaster and a slow train wreck in the mining services space. There's a proliferation of companies that have emerged to service the boom in, resource, in, in the resource sector, and I think that's just about to bust. Well, that's, it's a shame that you're so sure about something so negative, but yeah. on, on, on what basis? I mean, okay. Are there a number of forces coming, coming well, together? Yes, there or? are. What, what we know already is that, is that expectations for capital expenditure in the resource sector are being revised lower. And uh, I'm, on, I'm an external advisor um, to an investment committee for a large financial planning group in Australia, and I was chatting to one of the analysts who's recently spoken to BHP, CF, CFO and CEO. Uh, and they made the point that their job is to now transfer wealth from the business to shareholders. And the simplest way of doing that in, a, in an era of, of lower resource expenditure um, and lower resource prices is to cut costs. Now, BHP has 46,000 employees, but 76,000 contractors. So the low-hanging fruit are the contractors. And what we're going to see now is we're going to see this proliferation of mining services businesses try and survive by competing for less work. And the way they do that is through the tenders, they lower their prices to try and win the job, but that means lower margins. So I think we're going to see massive layoffs over the next 18 to 24 months and maybe because three years. Because the expansion years. was actually very, very fast oh, for was. the boom. The now, what, and what sort of companies are we talking about? Well, I think we're going to see tough times in 2014 for, for even the big companies like Wally Parsons and Monodelphus, um, the Fleetwoods, the companies that are providing the, the, uh, the portable villages um, for these resource projects, uh, companies like Deckmill and Forge. Um, um, businesses with particular exposure to, um, uh, to iron ore, mm. uh, especially, and coal, I think, they, and, and capital intensive businesses like McMahon Holdings, they're going to find that their operating leverage is going to work against them when the revenue is not coming in. And impl implications beyond the mining services sector, do you think? Well, I think possibly for, uh, you know, we've had a property boom in, in Perth mm. uh, as a result of this proliferation of, of cap capital expenditure in the resource sector, that could reverse. Uh, and we might see the other side of the boom. And we've seen it before, and I don't think it's going to be unusual or an exception this time. <laughs> Let's, let's move to Telstra, mm. um, and that's a quite strong pitch through the Financial Review pretty much all week about investing. their confidence about investing and about their mm. confidence of the, the dividends being maintained. Yes. Uh, but you don't have Telstra in your portfolio. No, we don't. And the reason is um, Telstra hasn't displayed significant growth historically, and I don't see how that's going to change dramatically in the future unless they grab market share from their competitors. This is They've, notwithstanding the 11 billion that's going to be floating well, in. Well, remember that's going to be that's going to be recorded. That money will be recorded as other income, and we understand that. But what we also know is the money that they're going to receive for decommissioning the network, for taking customers off the copper network, that's going to be offset by the fact that they're not going to receive the same margins that they were receiving for having customers on the network. The money that they're spending, for example on the infrastructure um, is going to offset uh, is going to offset the money they're receiving for giving the NBN access to their infrastructure, and then the ancillary um, contracts that they're getting for the um, uh, the USA, uh, yeah. sorry, the UMA, the United, uh, the servicing agreement, and yeah. um, that'll be offset by training, for example. So. so so what they're going to do is they're going to front load yep. their revenue. The present value will be front loaded. They'll get some upside in the short run, but over the long run, it's all going to be offset. But the chief operating officer, Brendan Riley, he believes the answer is growth. And the answer to growth is to keep investing. Well, of course, and we don't disagree with that. You have to reinvest. Yep. But historically, the company has not been able to do that. We've seen um, we've seen mobile phone plans in Australia rise from eight million about ten or eleven years ago to twenty two or twenty three million today, and yet. Telstra's profits today have un are unchanged from 10 years ago. There's been no growth. So we'll get some incremental improvement, but no one's forecasting massive improvement in profits. And that means their intrinsic value won't rise much either. Roger Montgomery, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see whether their plans to go overseas come off. Well, let's see. <laughs>